This gentleman's name is John Amesworth. He actually has a, a booth up there, way up the top, second to last one up there. You can go check it out after this today. And uh, his uh, topic is going to be talk about America's Remedy. Let's give it up for John Amesworth. All right. Okay, uh, I don't know uh, how many people are familiar with uh, what we do. Uh, we're basically a history group. I'm telling you a little bit of my history. I've been in this movement for 28 years, is how long I've been trying to figure out what's wrong with America. Uh, it started around 1990, and I uh, got involved in the Patriot Movement back then. And I've been through a lot of iterations of what people think is wrong in America. I've walked around the campground, I talked to several people last night, and what I'm finding is this person thinks this is wrong, this person thinks this is where we went away from constitutional government. We are a fractured people, and we need the knowledge it takes to be a free people again. And that knowledge isn't being, how many people have faith in the public education system? How many, give me a round of applause for the public education system. Not happening. How many of you went through the public education system? How many people, how many of you feel you were taught the right thing? How many people are familiar with the uh, novel 1984? What's two plus two, Winston? Five. And then you get through the whole story of how Winston was forced to believe a lie was the truth. And what's the last line of 1984, once Winston believes two plus two is five? You can't believe two plus two is five. You have to love Big Brother. How many people trust the government? I've been listening to people out here talk about property being taken, innocent people being killed, uh, fraud in elections, fraud in the courts, fraud in everything. But we're told that's a good system. Two plus two is five. And then we love Big Brother. We don't have lawful government taking place. How many people see the, the, the government of the United States under the Constitution being applied as it's written in that document? There's a disconnect. How did that happen? Well, I'm gonna tell you, rather than tell you what I've heard and seen and what I've been taught in the past, I'm going to tell you how we lost this country. How many people know what a state is? Let's define a state. A state has three parts. It's the people. The people are the state. And then they organize under a set of laws. That's your constitution. Okay? And then it has jurisdiction over where they can operate their laws. So that's a state. A state is the people. And what differentiates one state from a different state? That's what you give allegiance to, which one you pledge to. This nation was originally founded on the principle that everyone pledged to their state. I was a North Carolinian. You're a South Carolinian. You're a New Yorker. You're a, uh, a New Jerseyan, New Jerseyite, whatever those people are. I don't know. My mother, and I got a brother born up there, so I don't know. Oh, another thing. I was born to a pack of Yankees. I just like saying that. My, uh, my dad was born in upstate New York. My mother was born in New Jersey. I got two brothers born in Utica, New York. I got one brother born in New Jersey, and I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. And here's something I want to tell you, another little trivia question. We talk about April 19th, 1775. What's that date? Shot heard around the world. How many know the date, May 20th, 1775? That's the, that's the date on the top of the flag of the state of North Carolina. May 20th, the first declaration of independence came from North Carolina out of Mecklenburg County, where Charlotte is. It's called the Mec Mec Dec, Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence. That's where I live, so I learned that growing up in school. How many people knew there was a Declaration of Independence before the National Declaration of Independence? All right, got one. So just a little bit of history out there. We've got one weapon that the powers that be cannot handle, and that's the truth. They want to teach you that truth is relative. And I'm here to teach you that truth is concrete. 
What's the origin of law? Okay. Law comes from, in philosophy, to philosophize, it comes from one of two places. It comes from God or it comes from man. Okay? The truth is it comes from God. Our God is the truth. Jesus is the truth. And when Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit, how did he introduce it? As the helper. The spirit of truth that will lead you to all truth. We're told... To justify the wicked and condemn the innocent, both alike, are an abomination to the Lord. We live in a world of political correctness, where one side is never allowed to speak. We got a period of our history, the American Civil War, which is vilified without the other side being able to stand up. And I'm here to tell you where we lost America was the, during the American Civil War. I teach history. I'm, I teach the knowledge it takes to get this country back. How many people know that the state of North Carolina wrote a surrender letter to the United States military on July 1st, 1868? The war was over in 1865. Peace was declared in 1866. Why is the government of North Carolina, the governor, signing a surrender letter to a general of the United States Army in 1868. It's called Reconstruction. It's reconstructing, they weren't building bridges, they were annulling states. Where was, I'm gonna go back to what I was saying earlier. When you're in a state, what defines one state from another? It's where your allegiance is to. During the American Revolution, there were two states here, one with allegiance to the crown, one with allegiance to the Continental Congresses. Two different state body politics vying for the whole or 13 individuals. What happened in 1867? The United States Congress coerced the passage of the 14th Amendment. In order to do that, they annulled 10 states of the American Union. They said the only way you're allowed to come back into the Union is if only people loyal to Washington, you take an oath to Washington, then those people can adopt a new constitution and we'll bring that state back into the American Union. Two states called the state of North Carolina have entered the American Union. One was annulled by an act of Congress in times of peace. How many people are taught this in American history? We're not. We don't have, we got one back here, but we don't have the knowledge it takes. We're here thinking the government in place right now was the, it was the one put in place by George Washington. That was annulled. March 2nd, 1867. Now the beauty of the other side is what have they done to the American Civil War when you try to talk about it? As soon as you try to defend it, as soon as you try to bring everything, they want to say the war was about a moral cause. It was slavery. And if you teach anything different, then believe it or not, you just joined the Klan. And your home just got converted from a home to a compound. You're going to be vilified. But we've got to learn the truth so that we can stand on the truth. I've been involved in this movement for a long time. I've seen a lot of things come and go. People are doing the best they can with the knowledge they have. We're here up here at America's Remedy and North Carolina Republic. Go to our websites, americasremedy.com, ncrepublic.org. What we did in North Carolina and, and this is the beauty of history. Think of the Wizard of Oz. We got the government out there like the wizard. And then everything out there is the wicked witch and the flying monkeys and all this scary stuff. And we're looking to the wizard, this evil entity, to give us our rights back. Is voting going to get anything back? What direction are we going in? If you would graph the direction we're going in morally, what is it? Down. If you, if you draft the direction we're going in, or graph the direction we're going in, financially, how are we doing? Freedom-wise, how are we doing? Any rational person will tell you we're on, a, we're on a train wreck, going to our destruction, and we're just keeping busy trying to do what it takes, thinking we can go in the right direction. We're a fractured people. People in the military, how do you conquer people? Divide and conquer. We're a divided people. They tell us we get our strength from diversity. 
In other words, divide up. We got to quit this stuff. We got to quit buying their concepts. But what we did, because the original state of North Carolina was annulled by an act of Congress, does the unconstitutional act create anything lawful? No. Why don't we have lawful government in North Carolina? South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, uh, uh, Ohio, New York? No one's participating in it. What we did, and I, let me give you a brief history of, because of, the Reconstruction Act that annulled the states went to the United States Supreme Court. Georgia v. Stanton. Edwin Stanton, Secretary of War, State of Georgia, trying to stop Reconstruction. This is 1868, 1867. Supreme Court made a ruling. Look it up. So just because you have an act of Congress, it's going to annul and totally abolish the existing state government of Georgia. It's not within the jurisdiction of this court to make a ruling on the case. They let it go. Next time uh, the Reconstruction Act got before the Supreme Court was Ex parte McCardle. In the McCardle case, he was a Mississippi editor that wrote articles against Reconstruction in Mississippi. They arrested him. He got rid of habeas corpus, got to the Supreme Court. Got Jeremiah Black, former Attorney General, former Chief Justice of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to defend him, along with several others. They said Reconstruction is unconstitutional. Andrew Johnson. Where does Andrew Johnson stand as uh, the popularity of presidents? At the very bottom. Why? Because he defended the Constitution. He vetoed every one of these acts. And if you go to Raleigh, there's a statue of the three, excuse me, Two and a half presidents from North Carolina. You're going to have James K. Polk, Mecklenburg County. You're going to have Andrew Johnson out of Raleigh. And you're going to have Andrew Jackson out of the Waxhaws, which is on the border of North and South Carolina. No one knows where he was born. But in that statue in Raleigh, on Andrew Johnson's lap, he's holding the Constitution. And the phrase under him is he defended the Constitution. Because he fought against Reconstruction. And he's been vilified ever since. But who do they hold to a high account? Abraham Lincoln. What did Abraham Lincoln do? What did he say about states having a right to govern by their choice? Okay, what's the Constitution say? Article 3, Section 3, treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them, the states. Were the southern states waging war or were they defending themselves? Who's violating the law? Constitution of the United States, Article 4, Section 4. Congress shall guarantee to every state a Republican form of government. Reconstruction, do they give us a Republican form of government or do they coerce and force one on us? That's what's in operation today. We said the remedy was, and we did this in 1997. We said the reason we don't have lawful government, no one's participating in it. We did a declaration of reestablishment. We said, we're going to reestablish the original state of North Carolina that was annulled by Congress. It's never been changed by the consent of the people of North Carolina. In law, I have no obligation to recognize this entity. I have, I have not had a driver's license in 20 years, over 20 years. Okay? Gets me in their system every once in a while. I go in there, I say, okay, I will get your license if you can prove, because you issued it, you say I'm supposed to have it, I don't think you're created lawfully. If you can show me that Reconstruction, that war that Abraham Lincoln waged, and Reconstruction were lawful and constitutional, that Congress has the powers that it did, I will get your license. Otherwise, it's unconstitutional. And what I'm going to do is reestablish the original state. And there was 13 of us. We signed a declaration, just like our founding fathers. We used their principle. This is a peaceful, lawful remedy. But you've got to know where the law was violated. We sent a copy of it. We give notice to Bill Clinton, who was president at the time, and Jim Hunt, who was president at the time. And we've been going into court and fighting them, and we're trying to rally troops, the people who want to say, we want to reclaim what was illegally stolen from us. And I want to know how many people here want to reclaim what was stolen from us rather than riding this train wreck to oblivion. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to be doing a discussion, going to have a campfire discussion at our tent at the back. If you go back there, you'll see the... The lights, that's our camp. We got both booths, the last two booths over there. America's Remedy and NC Republic. I educate, I talk, I, I talk all along the, the East Coast. I've talked, uh, I know I've, I've talked to several people from Connecticut and, uh, and uh, 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 Massachusetts. 
I've been doing, I've done talks in Massachusetts and Worcester on several occasions. I've talked in Rhode Island, I've talked in Vermont, I've talked in Maine, I've talked in New Hampshire. And of course, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, yeah, but, and I drive through there twice a year. So I would love to come to your neck of the woods, anywhere along the East Coast, or, and uh, if people will pay for me to go West Coast, I will gladly do it, but I can't do that. This is just on my trip. But let's come, we gotta come together. We gotta come together as a people, focused, not divided. What is the problem? And then stand on it. You gotta stand on the truth. The Lord tells us in 2 Thessalonians of the coming with the lawless one, the people ceased having a love of the truth. And the Lord gave them over to strong delusions of where they believe a lie. I have believed lies. I have been given over to strong delusions because I was too lazy to figure out whether I was being lied to by the government and the public education system. It takes effort to get this country back. And the effort is attaining the knowledge it takes. We provide that. Come to our booth. Come talk to us. Come talk to us round table. Let's, uh, let's make something happen, people. We've got to get this country back because I see way too much gray out here. And how many people have faith in this uh, safe space gender generation coming along? If we don't do it, they've got it. We've got the truth. We've got to have the Lord on our side. We've got to have a regeneration of the, a movement of the Holy Spirit in this country again. We've got to get back to our roots, back to our foundation. I really appreciate y'all allowing me to come. I got to take a spot because, unfortunately, other people couldn't make it. I wasn't on the original list. I want to thank Wendy and the people here. I want to thank the security that's here. You're doing a great job. And uh, come visit us, guys. we got to get this country back. I'm looking for you. Let's reclaim what was taken from us. John, Ain John Ainsworth, America's Remedy, americasremedy.com. Uh, and we, got, we have copies of the surrender letter up here of North Carolina. They're up there. Thank you, John. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You know, it's almost like we're listening to today our modern day founding fathers, which many of us are today because we believe in our history and we keep uh, spreading the truth. Uh, gentlemen like John Amesworth is amazing because that's the people I, I could sit down and listen to all day because history is where it's at, you know, and you can't deny your history. That's one thing, even though that today they've taken it out of our schools and education. And, uh, you know, I say to people, unfortunately, what happened back in February in uh, Florida, Florida was a tragedy, you know. It's unfortunate that I, we the people see it as a terrible tragedy and we don't want to see it happen again. But our politicians, they, they thrive on this stuff. They like to take a, crush, uh, a crisis and use it uh, to further their political views and their political agenda. Uh, if our children knew today and these schools were being taught about our history and about our founding fathers and how amazing they were, you know something, maybe these kids would turn around and would take up arms and defend our country if they had to instead of giving up arms and, want, and, and asking the government for socialism, you know what I'm saying? Ask the government to take their rights and for government to control them. But uh, John Amesworth, that's amazing. I just met him, like I said, probably 10 minutes before he came up and spoke, and I, I can't wait to sit with him and hang out tonight and, and learn more from this gentleman.